I'm Sean from Offload Rugby Media. I'm Simeon from the TikTok Ref. Guys, I'm Murray, also known as Boss for Rugby HQ. And you're listening to the Rugby Connection Podcast. For the fans, by fans. Hello and welcome back to Guest Thursdays on the Rugby Connection Podcast. Today we have a very spe- special guest. We have Kyle Barrett on the podcast, who is a rugby content creator. You can find him on TikTok. He posts everywhere on Twitter, Instagram, and he also plays with Galwegians RFC. <laughs> Kyle, welcome onto the podcast. How are you keeping? Thank you for having me again. On, boys. How are you getting on? Not very good, thanks. Yeah, I'm good as well. I think you've been actually the most re- requested. Like, since when we announced yeah. the show, the first one, <laughs> when's Kyle coming on? When's Kyle coming yeah. on? Yeah. I'm like, that's up to Kyle. Like we, ha- like, we have wrote down potential guests and you were in there. Yeah. Just- yeah. Schedule in your Q and A and everything, like. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had to, I had to do that one when I got through my Q and A. Like, I'm just gonna call him out on it now. And just, yeah. like, this is your chance to see what I go on the show. Yeah, that's yeah. It. I got me booked in. Yeah, I think it gives you to say... it tells you a lot. It tells you a lot how like good you are for your content and your rugby stuff mm. as well. So they're playing it. Yeah, everyone wants to hear me, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just spitting facts. Yeah, I think it's fair to say yeah. that Murray's um comments were overloaded with requests to have you on anyway so <laughs> on, yeah. unreal. i don't blame them <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, can, I can't thank you as well because you you tested me on like my combined when i started doing combined 15s you'd ask me ones that would catch me off guard and then i think you were like one of the first people to add like three teams or just random like really random teams yeah. and then the whole overrated one. So I was there. You go. It was Kyle that asked me the overrated one and got me hate for it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got you a load of abuse for that. <clears throat> That's fine. I roll the punches now. But yeah, so I think you've all been a big. You've been a big factor on all three of our pages. We kind of called yeah. you the unofficial fourth member of Rugby Connection. Yeah. Us, so it just tells you how like close you are with us, away yeah, from yeah. the podcast. So yeah, love it. I think me and Sean started as well, started our TikTok like two days apart or something like that. I remember we started at the exact same time. Yeah, it was very close. I do remember I, at first I, I, I was looking at you and was like, oh, all right, okay, I better not see his ideas. And then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but um, yeah, no, it was very close. All right, yeah. So there from the start, yeah, so. there from the start. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> when, when, did you st- when did you start making TikTok videos, Kyle? January, I think. January. Hmm. Maybe. Oh, I'm, not, I'm actually not. Yeah, I, yeah. I started in March. Yeah, March. Yeah, I started. Yeah. yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Just how quick. Just how quick forward and likes comes out of. Like, I know. Nothing. Yeah. And once you get but, kind of over the kind of thousand followers, uh, yeah. Once you get kind of past that, it starts going up quicker then as well. Yeah, I think I said that to Sean like last week. I think. Um, when I when we started the show, I was on two hundred followers. I'm yeah. just shy of fifteen hundred. It's crazy. Absolute madness. Yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Um so what actually got you into rugby, Kyle? Into rugby. Um my dad has always liked it, so I kinda of grew up watching it. I could I remember um when I was maybe two or three I'd be sitting in front of the T V playing Lego. And um, I remember I kind of just got used to watch the matches. What first got me into it, though, was the 2013 line store. Okay. Um, we, used, we used to get up really early and watch the matches and everything. And I think kind of watching it with someone, they explained the rules to me and everything, the laws. Um, mm. I think that got me into it at first anyway. So that's kind of what got me into it. And we started watching more and more. But I started playing then when I was eight. And I started loving it then even more. Well, that's, that's class. What, what position do you currently play? Um, I just got switched to scrum half. I was a uh, flanker, and before that, I was a uh, centre, and before that, I was a ten. <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm kind of playing everywhere. I uh, was a back row for a few years, and now I just switched to scrum half. Well, hopefully you do a great job there. So yeah. I have faith in you. I could, so. I could end up moving again. <laughs> May as well. I mean, I've I've moved position this year, so. I, yeah, was a, I, I was a full back or centre. Now I'm second or a back row, so it's a lot to take that. in. Uh, I've not collapsed any scrums yet. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. I could halfway say <laughs> yeah. that, and I've not dropped anyone when we're doing lineup practices. It's, it's just a lot to. It's a lot of new yeah. stuff. So I think I'm doing a lot better than I give myself credit for. So 
Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Once you don't drop someone in a lineup, because that's sore. <laughs> I kind of didn't lift. It was uh, like last week at training. I didn't proper lift. I just kind of lifted my arms. So he kind of sat yeah. on my head, but he didn't fall. So. <laughs> yeah. Were you uh, <laughs> speaking? Anyway. Were you speaking from experience there, Kyle? Of being dropped in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely. Me a few times. <laughs> um, just <laughs> as, while we're chatting about your tra- transition to scrum half, how have you found it um, so far? Um, tough. I played often the first game that I played. Anyways, um, I'll say that, but it's not too bad. I'm kind of getting used to it now. We've been training over the summer a bit, anyways. Um, because I was kind of used to all the calls anyways and stuff and I was kind of keep track with how the backs were playing and everything and I like watching players like Aaron Smith um, and DuPont but mm. it's a bit tricky with some of the things but I th- think I'm getting used to it now Class and wh- who's your uh, favourite scrum half in terms of who, you, who do you prefer watching? Um, Aaron Smith's my favourite to watch but my favourite player is John Cooney Nice I like that Bit of a different one Yeah well, I think yeah. I don't know if I don't think Andy Farrell would agree with that, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone cares what Andy Farrell thinks at this stage. <laughs> no, but I, I was actually going to ask you this, but I may as well ask you now. What do you think of uh, Andy Farrell so far as the uh, Ireland head coach in terms of you know Ireland's playing style, squad selection? What are your thoughts? Oh, you could get me off in a rant here. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't like him very much. I think he's too similar to Joe Schmidt, and I think we needed something different. I think the fact that he never was a head coach before and then he's going into head coach for a country is it's a bit worrying in a way because there's a lot more to being a head coach than an assistant coach. It's not just about coaching on the field. Mm. And um, I think the fact that he was a defensive coach and Ireland's defence has been very poor. <laughs> luck, in my opinion. Mm. Um, so I'm not too happy with it yet. And I think the selection need to be changed a bit as well because from the 2019 World Cup he's kind of kept the guys in there that arguably could have been dropped and should have been um, so I think he's a bit too similar to Joe Schmidt but maybe he needs to change up some of his assistant coaches as well I think a couple of roles there need to be changed Who would you bring in as a backroom uh, coach? I'm not sure i get rid of my cat anyway <laughs> uh, I know that anyways I'd bring in a new attack coach and I'd probably bring in someone for Simon Easterby as well. But I'm not sure who I'd bring in. I'd like to have run Nogara there, but I don't think he'd take up anything unless it was for the head coach role. Yeah. So maybe in a could. few years we could see him there. What about um, maybe Sean Lancaster as an attacking coach? Yeah, I've often thought about that. I think he'd be a really good addition to there because um, he's been doing really well with Lens. And I think he's running the show there for a lot, but he just doesn't get a lot of credit sometimes. Yeah. But I'd like to see him there. And I said it a lot before, and I know it would never happen, but I'd love to have seen Palam with Ireland. I think he could have made a great job of it, and his style of rugby, I think, would have suited them players. Never but seen him. Obviously, yeah, obviously he fell out with the IRFU, so I don't know. Uh. Yeah, well, um, I think... Pat Lam is the type of coach that even though he was only in Ireland for a short period of time, he understands the Irish system and he understands, you know, the way that Ireland players are able to play very well, I think. What did you obviously very good for Connacht? What Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um I could see him coaching like um England or Wales in the future, to be honest. Yeah, I'm sure he'd like that. Well maybe. Well Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he had, I think I think he actually said in an interview that he wants to be the coach, coach for Wales. Wales. Yeah. yeah, he did. He said that a couple of Was it last year, maybe? I think it was the year before. I think it was his first season as Bristol coach. Yeah, Bristol, yeah. <clears throat> Do you think Ian Foster is very similar to Andy Farrell? Because Ian Foster was Steve Hansen's right-hand man. Do you think he's done yeah. a lot of change, or do you think it's just... I, he's a bit similar, but I wouldn't say he's as similar to Andy Farrell. I think Andy Farrell's maybe a bit more extreme, because Ian Foster seems to be willing to try things out a bit more, I think. But we haven't seen much New Zealand yet this season. I think yeah. the game yesterday, they were poor enough. Was it yesterday? Yeah, I thought yeah, they were poor it. enough. Um, and I think some of the selections maybe of players that were playing in Japan, I didn't think yeah. some of them should have been selected. So we'll see. But I think he is similar in a sense. Yeah, that's right. Would you have Scott Robertson then as... 
head coach yeah, all boxing. Been, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's been going so well with the Crusaders. But in saying that, Ian Foster being Steve Hansen's right hand man, mm-hmm. when Steve Hansen took over, he had also been involved as an assistant coach as well <laughs> with the All Blacks previously. So it can go well or it can go bad. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a strange one because. Yeah, like you said, like, we've had two that's been the assistant coach. But uh, Steve Hansen took like time away as well, did he not? I think he did, yeah, for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, because I think, he, I think was, he took out one period. I think he was Graham Henry's second-hand man. Yeah, he was. And, uh, took a chunk out and then came back. and. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure for how long, though. <laughs> Couldn't tell you either, but I just, yeah. I was, I'm always certain I've seen like old footage of him. Yeah. So, what are your predictions for the upcoming United Rugby Championship? How do you think? Your, what team is it you support, sorry? Connacht. You support Connacht as well. What, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How do you think they'll get on in the upcoming season? Um, I think they're lacking some squad depth, and I think that's what killed them last year. But I could see us doing well enough. It depends, because the South African teams, they'll be a good addition but I don't know will they be as strong as people are expecting to be um, I can't see Connors really qualifying for the Champions Cup the way the whole pool systems are Yeah. and the way where they'll need to finish in the table I think it could be hard I think they were very inconsistent last season they, were, they bottled a few leads one against Scarlet where they are like nearly 30 points up and they bottled that <laughs> um, <laughs> that wasn't a pretty watch so I could see us if we can kind of get that squad depth kind of maybe bring in another player or two just in some of the key positions and I think we're unlucky with injuries a couple of seasons as well I think if we can get everything right and be on a consistent good run of form I think we could be doing well then but it all depends Yeah, that's fair um, What players do you think need brought in in what positions? Um, I'd like to see I know Mac Hansen can cover 10 but I'd like to see someone else maybe brought in that couldn't cover 10 because Carty was inconsistent last season, but at other times against Leinster especially, he was magical. But I'd like to see us sign another pretty good 10, like that starting quality. And Fitzgerald is good as well, but I'm not sure what they do, but I think I'd like to see someone brought in there. And I'm not sure where else. They've signed a couple of props now, but I'd like to see a hooker brought in as well because we have Delahunt and Heffernan. But I think we kind of need another good, really good third choice hooker. Fair enough, Sean. Are you with Kyle on that one? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, well, I think Kyle hit hit the nail on the head when he was saying that you know Connacht really kind of fell off. I think in a lot of games, uh, it wasn't just a handful. Unfortunately, that Connacht fell off in the second, yeah. half, especially in the Pro 14. It was annoying to watch. Like they they start really well in the first half, and you look like all right, okay, we could you know you, you know could not run away with the game, but you know have a comfortable enough win. And then it's just the second half, like after halftime, I don't know whatever happens, yeah, it just falls apart. But I think. In fairness to Andy Friend, I think he's really you know, developing a bit of a style with Connacht. And you can see flashes there. It just needs it all to kind of click together. And once it clicks, I think Connacht can really do some damage. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, 100%. I definitely think he's the right man for the job. And they've brought in, I can't think of his name now, a fellow from <laughs> Grenoble as well, um, into the coaching team, which he looks to be good anyways. And they signed a couple of good players as well, a couple of props um, that we definitely needed because I thought our scrum is where... We got destroyed a lot last season. Sometimes Buckley and Bielham, when they went off, things went really bad a lot of the time. And I think it's the same with um, our mall defence. That's where we got killed. Um, I remember Richard Hibbert against the Dragons. He scored a hat-trick in the first half. Because every mall that they got five metres out, it just it was a guaranteed try. Yeah. How do, you, how do you let Richard Hibbert score a try? Well, I won a hat-trick. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it wasn't good to see. He seemed shocked himself. <laughs> oh my, I mean, I hope Connacht does well, I've got a soft spot for Connacht, I was lucky to be at Murrayfield when they won the Pro 12, yeah. I actually got a Connacht top, somebody thought I was from America, because <laughs> really. yeah. where I'm from, I'm across the River Forth, yeah. so I like, bumped into someone in the pub and they went, oh where are you from, and me being me, went, oh just across the pond, meaning the River Forth. They thought yeah. I meant like the North Sea and went, are you like Mary O'Shaughnessy's 
like dot uh, son. <laughs> yeah. She's a local corner shop owner. I'm like, no, but sure, thanks very much. <laughs> I take it they were Irish, though. So. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, but you've got a corner top on. I was like, yeah, because like my dad's job, he goes around to, like Britain and Ireland, and I got was lucky enough to get a corner top. But yeah, yeah. But there's not there's not many people outside of like Limerick that has a uh, Connaught top. I'm like, all right, well, yeah. there you go. There's a rare breed for you, so I'll take that for you. <laughs> um, Kyle, what do you um, make of Connaught's chances in the Champions Cup? Obviously, Drew having to play against Stade Francais and Leicester this year. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I'm confident. Um, that will be a tough one, but I think we can get back on Leicester. And Steve Borswick is doing a good job with them, but I think we might be able to... I think we'll win the two games at home, and if we can win an away game, as well, I think we're in a good position. I'm not sure, are they doing draws for the round of 16, or how they're working that, but um, I can see us getting out of the group stages anyways, and I'd love to be at a knockout game for Ghana. Yeah. Oh my God, can we, can we go to that, please? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really planning it. I really want to go. I've never been to Ireland. I want to go. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask you, Carl, then what, how excited are you to be back in the sports ground, hopefully in the next couple of months? Oh, so excited. I'm, I'm checking my emails every day looking to see if I can get a season ticket already. Can't wait. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm, I've been waiting. I've been looking to see, like the URC, obviously there's a lot of challenges with the South African sides, but still haven't released the fixtures. I've been like, you know, it's not that far away till it starts. Like, you know, come on, like let's just get some pictures like, so we can start planning. But hopefully, it yeah, I'm hope far away. I'm hoping Connacht will announce a home preseason friendly because they're playing Worcester away. I'm hoping they'll organise a home one, and hopefully, then they can let in crowds. I'd imagine it'd be about like three thousand or so. But it's been nice being at the Ireland games. It was so nice to be back in the stadium. But hmm. really looking forward to being at a Connacht game more than I was for the Ireland games. Yeah, I think um, the sports ground is one of those venues that I think. Well, for me, I've not, never been to like a Friday Night Lights game, but like when it's you know pitch black, kind of cold, but not the weather's not too windy, or just nearly any day. It's just like when the, when it's packed out, like the atmosphere is unreal in the sports ground. Like it's brilliant, anyways. The rain is just coming in on top, like and you're soaked, and you can barely <laughs> see with the rain and the hail. And it's re- it's really good. Like it's a great atmosphere. The stadium looks horrible, and yeah. it's probably it's just the shed really, but it's <laughs> great atmosphere, and the people there are great. Um, what well, well, I think. I think on my bucket list, I really want to go to Edinburgh's new stadium. I need to. It's, yeah. it's oh, up yeah. They've got two home fixtures for the preseason against Newcastle Falcons and Benetton Treviso. So that'd be exciting. And how do you think Edinburgh will get on, Kyle? Because they've got Mike Blair now as head coach. They've somehow signed Emiliano Buffelli, which I'm absolutely buzzing for. Plan. Um, I think they're going to do awful. <laughs> I'm not going to like that. I, I think they're going to do awful. That's fine. Um, yeah, I can't see that. I don't know. I just had that feeling that they're going to do really, really poor. Um, I think Glasgow are going to do well enough, to be honest. But I think Edinburgh are going to be in the bottom four. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Well, there's, yeah. well, there's there's my hopes for the season crushed in <laughs> one second. Not the answer you're hoping for. <laughs> I know, I know, Adam was not title contenders. I, I, re- I completely realise that. Um, After that, it's it's a weird one because I, I've been there for the bad times for Edinburgh, where like Saracens came up for a Heineken Cup game and put fifty on us. <laughs> well, like ridiculous easy, and it wasn't even like Saracens' best team either. And, yeah. yeah, but I've also been there for the good ones where we get to the final, like to the semi finals of the Challenge Cup. And they're amazing matches to be at as well. Yeah, like the just the pedigree of players we've had, but then let go. And then, like, I've always felt for a majority of the time we don't bring anyone in. Like, Tim Visser was absolutely on fire for Edinburgh, got yeah. a big move to Harkins. We never brought anyone in yeah. straight away. And it wasn't until a few years later Duhan van der Merwe came on the scene. And now he's away. But fair play, we've got Buffel as an instant replacement. So hopefully... Yeah, and he, he's a great player as well. So I think that's a really good replacement. But you never know. They could shock you in some of the games. But it's hard to see them doing well for me anyways at this stage. 
and we've still got Hamish Watson. I can't call him the, the mall anymore because he cut off. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think, Kyle, I think it's fair to say that you can expect an unfollow on TikTok from Murray after those uh, predictions. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not at all. We, what was it when we had uh, Harvey on? I asked him for his Six Nations predictions and it yeah, didn't go down well with me either, but I still follow him, <laughs> so it's all good. Everyone's giving you the, the bad ones. Just nobody's given Edinburgh or Scotland any hope. So <laughs> Yeah, like I said about Scotland as well before you started recording. Yeah, yeah, you, you said, yeah, we, you were going last in the World Cup group, yeah. You behave yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kyle, while we were briefly chatting on, obviously, Edinburgh have a new stadium, as Murray said. The sports ground, obviously, was it last year or the year before that they announced the plans to upgrade it? I think it was 10,000. Did you see that? And what are your thoughts on that? Um, I didn't see the recent ones. I've seen, obviously, the ones uh, when Leo Varadkar was in the sports ground, but I didn't see. Hmm. What was the recent one? I, well, I think that was the one. I think <laughs> I think it's, well, that was a while ago. That was two years ago. I think, I think they're still going ahead with that, are they? But it's still a long way away. It's, um, I can't see it happening soon because of COVID, obviously. I don't think they'll get the funding as soon as they want to. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see it happen and everything. I'd love to kind of have a better stadium and be able to fit more people in as well. Because mm. 7,000 7, isn't many people at all, really, for a big game or anything. If you're playing Leinster or you're playing a semi-final and you have seven or 8,000 people, it's not very many much. But um, I'd love to see it happen, but I don't see it happening soon because of COVID. Hard to know. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's an experience when you're when you're standing at the at the end of the end of the pitches, you know, no seats or whatever, and there, as you said, the rain and the hail is pouring down. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a, a weird one. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe I don't want to go then. I don't want to <laughs> go all the way to Ireland and not be able to see because of the rain and hail. Maybe not. We just <laughs> might just leave that one out then. Uh, yeah, um, but um. Kyle, is there a game next season that you're most looking forward to, be it one that you can go to or one that's far abroad or whatever? Is there a game that you're look, really looking forward to and watching? Um, I've got tickets for the Ireland-Argentina game in November, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's obviously a guaranteed one. And I'm hoping to get to the All Blacks game as well, but um, I'm not sure will I yet. Um, so there are two Ireland games I'm really looking forward to, and the Six Nations, I'd love to go to France. We're playing France and England away, so I'd love to go there. And for Connacht, then I'd love to go, if I'm not going to uh, an away Six Nations game, I'd love to go to Stade Francais away. But um, one, another guaranteed one I'm looking forward to is the two Champions Cup games at home, Leicester and Stade Francais, because I think they're always amazing experiences. Um, kind of full house, Friday night, brilliant atmosphere. What can you, else can you ask for? Yeah, no, absolutely class. Murray, I'll hand it back to you. I'm sure you have a few more questions. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask, it was similar to what you said, like, is there any games you were looking forward to? I was just going to ask Kyle, what was the best game you you have been to as of yet? The best game I've been to, uh, that's the easiest <laughs> question you've asked so far. Um, <laughs> the Connacht the Con- Glasgow semi-final in 2016. It was so Fair good. And the game the week before, actually, it was... Um, that guaranteed us a semi-final. It was against Glasgow in the fourth ground as well. That was, prob- that was probably better, actually. It was amazing. And Buck got man of the match. And I just remember when he was coming off and when the game finished, everyone ran onto the pitch. <laughs> like, thousands of people ran onto the pitch. It was amazing. It was the best game I've been at. Um, and I've been at some really good ones. Um, but that's definitely the best. Better than Ireland all for me. That's a big claim, but I like that. I yeah, like that's, the, that's big. Okay, you didn't go for like the most obvious choice. Yeah. Nah, I, um, I love the Connacht games because it was so special and it was more unexpected than Ireland beating the All Blacks as well. So yeah. to get to a Pro 12 final, it was that was huge. It just sounds weird saying Pro 12 because I went to Pro 14, then Pro 14, and then and the UFC. Up, and now the UFC, and yeah, they just keep changing it. and yeah. What do, you, what do you actually think of the whole like development and expansion of you now the URC? Um, I think the rebrand was needed because <clears throat> I wasn't watching any games. I watched so many rugby games, but um, I wasn't watching any 
of the pro what was it pro fourteen or Rainbow Cup games apart from yeah. the Irish teams playing. I just I'd rather watch the Premiership or anything else because it was so poor. So I think um the rebrand will hopefully improve the quality of rugby, and I think it was needed. But I think the way they're doing it, it seems to be good. I'm not a huge fan of the pools, but um I think like everything else, and I think the addition of South Africans is good. Yeah, so I've, I've said that because I don't know if it's like what it is at, at, well, at Murrayfield you used to get pitch high standing I don't know if you get that at the sports ground but you always get yeah. a chance to like get a photo with the players at, at full time or even meet some of the players so personally I'd, I'd to meet like Marnie Stain or see a Khaleesi or like, like players yeah. you're, ne- you're rarely going to actually see it ever again and yeah just that's yeah. kind of why I want to go to the first batch of home games for Edinburgh at the new stadium just because I've never seen like Marnie Stain yeah. like, live it's, in a stadium and it's a bit like yeah. that in Connacht. Um when you're going into the stands the players are actually coming out come out and they go into the pitch the same way the fans go into the stand. Oh, you're, okay. you're walk- I'm there walking in beside Bundy Aki to go in, to go to my spot to stand and he's there walking around the pitch and he's like, Oh, how are you getting on like? And um, it's the same for the away team as well. So you could be there walking to your spot and there see a Khaleesi walking beside you. <laughs> um, and at full time then, the players, they all the Connacht guys do, and usually the away team as well, they mm-hmm. come out and they take pictures or sign autographs or whatever. Um, and it's really good the way they have it. And I hope for the new stage that they keep it that way because I think that's one of the big things about Connacht is that the players and kind of the fans, they're always kind of, meeting and stuff and there's a big kind of community to it yeah no I, I agree with that I, I like to hear and see stuff like that especially because I'm not saying Connacht's are like a small like a small team but like a smaller pass A team yeah it is um, I think as well I always look forward to kind of Hanukkah Cup games or Champions Cup games because mm-hmm. you're playing maybe Toulouse or and you've Anton Font there and stuff and you, you never think that you're going to see them kind of in person um, or be kind of that close to them or get a picture with them. So I think that would be an exciting thing as well as having the African team see a Khaleesi, Peter Seftu, Troy, the team fee, Morning Stein, as you said as well. It would be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who's your favourite Connaught player ever? I feel like it's been Diaki, but I just want to tr- test you anyway. Um, no, it's not actually. Diaki is probably my favourite player now, or one of the, my favourite players. But um, John Muldoon, I think maybe John he's Muldoon. a Connacht legend. Enough. But yeah, it's, it's hard to choose because I know a good few of them personally as well. So I could be a bit biased. But um, John Muldoon or Bundyaki maybe, or John Cooney as well. I was gonna, I was going to rub salt in the winds. I was going to say Robbie Henshaw, but I didn't want to <laughs> bring that one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's up there as well. He's up there for me. Sean, you got any other questions for Kyle? Yeah, sure. Just the uh, last one for me anyway, Kyle. Who is your overall favourite player out of all the teams and players, past, present? Who's your overall favourite player? Me. Uh, this, this changes every week. And that, that's why I changed my profile picture on TikTok. It's like my favourite player at the moment or that's coming up for a game is who I put like for the weekend, the All Blacks are playing. My profile picture is going to be Aaron Smith because he's going to be my favourite player. Mm. But... Of all time, my favourite player, Dan Carter, maybe. He's up there anyway. Um, for a while, Lee Halfpenny was, it was. And Bundy Aki has been my favourite for a few years now. So I'm going to say I have a favourite player for every team. I can't give you a straight one. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fair. Like, you know, it's hard to choose. And it, it is a very difficult question. I've been asked by myself. I'm like, oh, there's kind of a handful, but like, you know, it's hard to pin it down to one <laughs> time. Yeah. No, um, absolutely. That's the last one for me, Murray. Do you have uh, anything else? Any other questions? I was, I was just going to say it's actually quite a relief to hear an Irish person not say Brian O'Driscoll or Ron <laughs> Algarra is our favourite. So I was like, a quite uh, fresh of with a fresh yeah. air there. So I thank Kyle for that one. Brian O'Driscoll's off there. Um, Ron O'Gara isn't really, to be honest. I don't know why. Obviously, they're both legends, but um, I think there's other players I preferred watching them play or. Just some things you might see them do off the field. It's just you really like them because of that as well. 
I've got I've got one more for you just because I've seen it and for our show, but it's not going to ask because it wasn't the most like. But I'm just going to ask you it. Right, right. Your, what is your like biggest like unpopular opinion in this in this oh. sport rugby? You can't be just, off guard just, there. Just, just disclaimer before I even said it: do not send hate for him. It's just it's just for fun. We're just <laughs> come at me, come at me. I'll defend us. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, there you go. He's he's brave. Go for he's it. Crazy. Put him in the ring. My big, my biggest unpopular <laughs> opinion. I, I've I've won that that you won't like, and Irish fans won't like. Scottish and Irish fans are the most biased, and the media, the Irish media, is the worst me- media. I think. So the pundits oh. and journalists, I think they've we've the worst kind of pundits and the most biased. That's interesting. Do you, That's fair. Do you think the um, the media is either biased for or against Ireland or both, depending on <coughs> what's happening? Or? For because I think the whole Irish media went nuts when Marcus Smith got called up to the lines saying Johnny Sexton mm. should be there. Mm. And I know, I know, I know Murray was on the ball. I know, I know about this. I messaged Kyle about this because I broke the news on my page that Marcus Smith was added yeah. to the Lions. And then I'd be like, Sexton's been robbed. There should have been Sexton. No, shouldn't. Shut up. Sit down. Please go away. Yeah. Alone. And the same, the same thing kind of ring rose was robbed, I thought. And Standard's amazing, to be fair, and saying Standard was robbed, and I think there's too much kind of negativity about from the Irish media, and um, a lot of them don't like project players either, mm. so I don't like that. Um, I'll give you another unpopular opinion, because that wasn't really a, a proper rugby one. Okay. Um, it was a good one, though. I liked it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, All Blacks aren't the best team in the world, because I think everyone's saying they are, but I don't think okay. they are. And they're they're probably my second favorite team, but yeah. Go on, who's the best then? South Africa. Fair enough. That's that's hard to argue. Yeah. Must be honest. Yeah. And the Crus- Crusaders, I think, are the best club team by far. Um, I ah, think easily. That goes back to my point, saying Irish fans are biased sometimes, overly biased. That Leinster because Leinster's Crusaders. the best. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, people say extra would as well. I don't think it would even be close. I'm an XR Chiefs fan and you know, <laughs> Crusaders are miles ahead of yeah, yeah. everyone else. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to lie, I was one of those Irish fans that a couple of years ago would have said that, oh, you know, <laughs> it would beat the Crusaders, you know, any day. So, I'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, it's very fair. You know, you know, obviously with yesterday, South Africa, World Cup champions and Crusaders, you know, they're super rugby champions. How many years in a row now is it? Five, is it four or five? Five, yeah. Five years later. One, 2016, 17, two, 18, 19. No, that's weird. They've done it weird. It's two, like two Arturoas back to back, but five. Yeah. Super rug- so five overall, but three no Super Rugby's in. Hmm. Two Arturo. Yeah, they broke the. Yeah. Anyway. Strange. Maybe you can answer me this one, Kyle, because Sean was useless when I asked him. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He, he, he was on. I'll be honest. He was useless. He wasn't there himself. Robert Bellacan. Why does he get called the cat? The cat? Yeah. <laughs> that was exactly my I, I, was, I had the clip. I all drug me on like Instagram and Facebook and that had a picture of Robert Belkin when he scored on his debut for Ireland. And yeah. I just had the caption, the cat. And I'm like, why is he called the cat? Because I caught Sean put on the try <laughs> and I commented the cat and Sean's like, is that what you call him? Like, no, that's what Ireland rugby call him. I'm asking why does he get called that? I I don't know. My guess would be that a cheetah is a cat and a cheetah, a cheetah is one of the fastest things that there is. <laughs> and he and he's really fast. Logical. Very logical. We'll, we'll go for that. I don't think, I think anyone actually knows why he gets called the cat. No, I, I, haven't, I haven't a clue. Oh, well, we're just going to take me to... The, that's going to go with me to the grave. Like, why is Robert yeah. Pollock getting called the Message, the message, message him on Instagram and ask him. I'm just gonna not nothing else. Just be like, "Hi, why are you called the cat?" <laughs> yeah, no, I actually do though. I bet he'd get back to you. <laughs> That's uh, one of rugby's biggest conspiracy theories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, well, this has been an absolute blast, and <laughs> we finally got the most highly requested Kyle to join us. Yeah. And Everyone can get to, just... to me again now. You can come back on anytime. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got an idea that I want to run by Sean and Simeon, but 
you're getting left out with that conversation for the yeah. time being. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, you, you've been very busy and it's been hard to yeah. get a hold of you for the most part. But um, we, we got you. Yeah, you're a great lad. We've, we always have a laugh. Um, you help all of our pages. I try and comment and like as much as I can for your stuff. And How old are you, yeah. if you don't mind me asking? Just because of how you 17. deal with, like, you're 17? Yeah. Right. Just because, uh, like, I know... That was I know your guest event. About 16, 17, yeah. I knew you were... Yeah. I, I know I'm the oldest... I feel like I'm the oldest rugby TikToker that there is, so... <laughs> Do you? Uh, um, there, there's one there's someone there's someone that's old um, well oh, Howdy what? I suppose Howdy Howdy's older <laughs> yeah he, he covers uh, yeah okay well, yeah that's fine I'll, say, <laughs> I'll take second I'll take second uh, the, the rugby guy the rugby guy's old yeah yeah, yeah. And he, he also oh. thinks he plays for the Lions so oh he does he does yeah. <laughs> But um, um, just to, I wondered how you always dealt with like because you're very, like obviously very popular. You've got a mass following when it comes to followers yeah. on TikTok. I just wanted to know how do you deal with let's call them stupid people. How do you deal with stupid people? Give it like they come, out, they come out with like ridiculous claims that have like nothing to it or just hate. <laughs> okay, um, some people just give you hate and um. I watched the video that Ugo Manya shares before and they're like, oh, just block people. It doesn't matter. If, you know, they're saying, you know, it doesn't matter if um, what happens because if you just block them, then why not? Yeah. And I remember watching that video. I can't really put it into context <coughs> exactly, but um, I watched that and I thought, it was just yeah, just block them or just delete the comments or something or just ignore it because you're just feeding into it then. And yeah. if you kind of, you you're just going to stoop down to that level of stupidity really and um then people come out with like ri- ridiculous ideas or you know nothing about rugby <laughs> i'm like well what's your logic then? or like oh this fair stats are better i'm like well what's their stats then and nine times out of ten they won't actually come back to you <laughs> i love it because you get people <laughs> like when you ask me the overrated team and i was like sam wonder how it's overrated and without me even messaging you you jumped in and went just because he says he's overrated doesn't mean he thinks he's not a good player. I'm like that, that's exactly that. He's not yeah. a bad player. He is overrated. Yeah, you could you can be like top ten best in the world, but still be overrated. Sexton, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to say it. You have to say it. I had to say it. I, I had it on the tip of my tongue. I'm just going to let it slide out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it took me a while to like deal with it really well but I think if you want to kind of run a good page that's kind of it's a friendly one and you want to have a good community I think you can't be kind of stooping down to that level of stupidity or kind of saying things to people I think especially if you if you want to be like like this I'm on the podcast here but if I'm going out calling calling someone something yesterday you're going like well I don't really want them on my podcast (laughs) <laughs> no, yeah, because he's gone out saying all this, and it just looks bad on us. Then, yeah, so you just, just like we're just it. trying to hide it, hide it under the rug, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say you can't swear, but you're too young, so no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't going anyway. So I was there thinking, I, I was thinking, I better not. <laughs> well, we kind of dabble on swear when we record episodes and. My plan last week, because I was I was really annoyed last week. I dropped one f bomb. Semi and yeah. to proceed into three more. Like, oh, <laughs> God, man! And like, and why, what, what made you say it? The second test. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, mate, thank you for coming on. Nah, thanks for having me. I really oh. enjoyed it. Good. You're honest, honestly, you're welcome back anytime. And like I said, I'm going to mention to Sean and Simeon, you might be part of our idea for down the line. But I still yeah. call you. You're like you are like the unofficial fourth member of the Rugby Connection podcast. You've helped out. <laughs> yeah, love page. it, love it. You've helped out my page a lot personally, so I can't thank you enough for that. And yeah, you're just genuinely just a great lad. I'm 
like Bill yeah. Shitton. There you go. There's your, there's a the <laughs> There you go. Uh, no, yeah, no. Worries. I think it's a great community though, like of all the different rugby uh, content creators compared to. I'm not going to call it just football, but um, compared but to football. some of the other kind of TikTok <laughs> communities, um, it's just there's so much toxicity in it and there's so much yeah. drama. But you don't really have that in the rugby one. I think it's nice and everyone supports each other. So thanks a million for having me on because I really enjoyed it and it was great to chat to you. Good. Yeah. No. Good, I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks. Yeah. No, Colin, thanks a million for coming on. Um, if people want to find you um, online, um, where can I find you at? What's your um, your username? Or you can find me on TikTok uh, Rugby Kyle, on Instagram underscore Kyle Barrett underscore. I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, underscore Kyle Barrett underscore on Instagram, and here I'm going. I'm on the phone trying to find them, and on Twitter at Rugby Kyle underscore. Um, Twitter is where I like to argue with everyone. So if you, want, if you want to see, if you want to see me getting annoyed at people, go on Twitter. Oh, there you go. It just comes on. Every day. Didn't you try to brave face on? Keeps on tech talk. No, on not all the time. Not all the time. Comments takes you to Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is where you all never, the drama is. You don't know what you could find there. <laughs> I was calling um, some um, English journalist to tool yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious yeah no but Kyle in fairness your, your rugby knowledge is top drawer and you know uh, if, if anyone does check out your pages they will be in, they will be uh, let's put it they'll be uh, they'll have a lot of wis- more wisdom than than they had before before they put on your page but um, no absolutely thanks many for coming on and for everyone this has been I think the fifth or sixth guest episode on the Rugby Connection podcast and we will see you all next week goodbye <laughs>